First, um, thanks everyone for attending today. Um, I'm Bobby, I'm a client success manager here at Adap. Along with me is Sam, I can have him introduce himself. I'm Sam Fari. I'm the team lead of the instructional designers at EdApp. Awesome. And yeah, we're, we're really excited today to talk to you about blended learning. Um, I think that even if you're, even if you've been with EdApp for a bunch of years, or if you're brand new, if you're just starting out with us, I think that everyone and everyone in between would be able to find value in today's webinar. So um, cool. Um, Let's get into it here. So just wanted to break down the agenda for today. So I'm sure some of you might be, you know, wondering what blended learning is exactly. So we'll break that down a little bit for you. Um, then Sam's going to take over and talk about the Kirkpatrick model a little bit and what that is and, you know, how that could, how that could help in the, in the blended, blended learning universe. Um, then we'll kick it back over to me and I'll talk about some fe current features in that app that you can use to create a blended learning journey for, for your learners. And then we'll talk about some customer use cases as well. So what some of our current customers and how they're using these features, which you know is really great for you guys to hear. Um, and then I'm gonna show the platform a little bit and show you some you know, course structures and how we can structure some of these things inside of a course and use some of the additional features such as rapid refresh. Um, before we, before we you know, move on, I just wanted to make sure that you put your questions in the chat or the Q and A. Um, you know, we do have some people standing by to help, and we'll also answer some questions live as well. Anything yes. to add to that, Sam? It will, uh, will be recorded. So yes, we'll, Sorry about that. This will be recorded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, anything else to add, Sam? Before I kick it over to you? No. Um, awesome. Awesome. Okay, so I think the first question here, and Bobby, you'll be manning that. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. The first question is, what is blended learning? And uh, blended learning is really a mix between what e-learning and training is and real life. Okay, so how do you have a, a blended learning journey that incorporates human elements and real uh, human elements like group training, and feedback as well as uh, the e-learning aspect. And the Kirkpatrick model we'll get into in a second is really about testing how uh, effective all of that is in behavioral change. Okay, so one of the key uh, benefits of a blended learning experience is it's a, there are multiple ways to reach learners. Not everybody learns the same way. Not everybody can pick up an asynchronous training module. That's a big word, and I'll explain what that is in a second. Let's just say micro lesson, and uh, it all compute. Okay, so we know that we learn in different ways and different modalities. And blending blended learning is a way that everybody can benefit from a training program, not just the people that can... Uh, are very good with text or very good with the e-learning module, but also for the people that are out in the field and they learn that way. Okay, so that's that's what we mean when we're talking about blended learning. So another key feature of it is there's an increased feedback from management. There's a two-way street happening. So it creates a conversation between the employees who are being trained and the management who is deploying the training. A uh, language is developed and a uh, point of reference is happening between those two, okay? Another thing that it does is it creates a better learner retention. So because it's a more holistic experience, it's not just doing micro lessons on a phone, there's a higher retention rate because your training is being uh, reinforced all of the time. It's in practical assessments where uh, you're getting credit for having actual behavioral change on the, on the, on the floor or in, in the field. And uh, it's not just you take a learning module and then it's never talked about again. It's referenced again in things like discussions in things like group trainings, and spaced uh, quizzing and AI. So we have all of that stuff in EdApp. And one of the, I think the unique thing about EdApp is that we're not trying to make that holistic learning experience just be 
e-learning. We are expanded beyond that. So in EdApp, you have a suite of all these features that goes beyond just the micro lesson and goes into real life. And so that's what we're so proud of here. So we know that not every solution is a technological one, but we can uh, incorporate real world scenarios and real world behaviors and, and, uh, and analyze those things through EdApp. It's, a, it's an amazing suite that's being built here. The last uh, thing that we'll talk about too is that learners can prove they're knowledgeable in a real world scenario. So, so one thing that we do know is that studies show 70% of learning happens while on the job, okay? It's not in training, it happens in the field. You are next to your coworker and you're seeing how they do it and things like that. You're getting advice from management, you're figuring out things on your own. So a lot of things are happening on the job that you're learning. And what EdApp can do is measure and acknowledge that learning as well. It doesn't just have to be in a micro lesson. So uh, through practical assessments and group trainings and discussions, uh, we have that blended learning journey that goes beyond just, just the micro lesson. So how do we know if that's working? There's a few different ways. So if uh, Bobby, you wanna go to the next slide. Sure. Uh, the Kirkpatrick model is a L&D framework to uh, test or evaluate the effectiveness of training itself, okay? And it really works like this. There are four levels of evaluation. There's reaction, learning, behavior, and results. And I'm gonna explain what, what all of that means. Uh, reaction, the first step is really measuring the attitude that people have towards training in general. It's kind of like the pre-work, okay? Um, have people taken training in the past? What are their attitudes going into the training program? Now, you might go, well, why is that important? It's important because in adult learners, it's much different than uh, students, let's say in a university or in high school or anything like that, where a teacher goes, you're gonna need to know this. And then they all pick up the pencil and they start taking notes. That's not what happens on, in adult learners. Adult learners, the first thing that they're gonna ask is, well, why do I need to know this? And your job, and creating your training suite is to give practical reasons and goals of why this is going to be important. But it's also important to gauge where your employees are starting as they start the training. Do they, uh, do they like training? How do they feel about it? That's going to inform how you set up your training uh, modules. Another thing that uh, you're going to find out is uh, what do they feel they need training on? That's a really big, important part of this uh, because there might be a, a knowledge gap that they're hitting on the floor in, in their workplace that we don't know about unless we ask or unless we do something like test and see where are those knowledge gaps, because that can inform what training to even do in the first place. Okay. The second step is the learning. Now this happens in many different ways, but this is where micro lessons can fall into and group training. And uh, that's where your analytics will happen. You can see if people are doing well in the learning part of it. But to even see if the learning is really taking hold is through the third step, which is behavior. The training or most training, 90% of training, I would say, if not more, is about does it create a behavioral change? Is there a behavioral improvement? And what that means is when an employee is out in the field, um, are they doing something better? Or are they doing something that's um, that they got from the learning itself? Did that learning translate into real life? That's where behavior comes in. So this is the ultimate goal. Okay. 
And it's very different than the fourth part of it, which is results. And so what does that mean? Behavioral change creates better results for the company. Okay, so is this resulting in a benefit to your organization? Okay, so those are two different things because your employee might have learned everything uh, that they wanted to know and their behavior has changed, but did it get your company the results that you wanted it to have? Okay, so that's where the results part comes in. It's very different than behavior. Um, and if you can go to the next uh, slide, Bobby, we can kind of talk about, um, actually, we kind of went over this one. So let's go to the next one. Sure. Uh, this is the really what we can do with the Kirkpatrick evaluation model. So as you can see here, these are all different features that EDAP has that you can use in all four of those levels. Okay, so um, everything that we just defined, you can find in EDAP. And we hit all four of those levels now uh, with the introduction to practical assessments and group training. So that's an amazing, amazing thing. That's, that's a sort of a recent development. Uh, we're really excited about that. And so your blended learning journey can happen throughout all of that app uh, for reaction, discussions and assignments, getting those uh, conversations started with your employees about what they wanna learn. That's really important. Rapid refresh. That's where you can put out a, uh, a test or a quiz with 20 questions all at once or more. You put it in an Excel sheet, you load it up in rapid refresh, and then everybody gets a quiz. And you can actually see on a slide or on a question level of where the gaps are in knowledge. And then surveys and reflective questions and micro lessons can help as well. So that is so covered, okay? And that pre-work is really, really important for blended learning. In the second step in the learning aspect, you have your micro lessons that everyone I think here is, is, is aware of that we have our authoring tool and micro lessons. But you have these other aspects too that help in the blur, blended learning journey and that's group training. You can now have group training and people can get credit for that in that app. Virtual classroom, if you're in a kind of remote setting, you can actually host Google Meets or Zoom calls and things like that in EdApp. They don't have to leave EdApp to get to those things. You can actually schedule it there and they can get credit. Brain Boost is the AI spaced repetition um, that is informed by how well or what areas you got right and wrong in the micro lessons. So there's your learning aspect. We have a ton of learning aspect, but I'm really excited right now about the third step which is the behavioral change. Uh, so important as a result of the learning. And now we have practical assessments that help you do that. As a result of that, you have the fourth, which is the results. That's your performance dashboard, your slide level analytics, all of those things that you can evaluate. So uh, that's, the, that's how the Kirkpatrick model can be used. And let's take a look at the next slide, Bobby, and just kind of look at an example of what that journey can look like. Here's a eight week uh, plan of how you can use these features all at once um, and to create a training, blended training program. Um, this could be spaced out even further than this. This is, we're just putting eight weeks here to, to give you an example. Uh, some frequencies are gonna be different depending on the organization that you have. Uh, this could be, um, what it, this could be months, this could be weeks. So it's, it's up to you. Uh, but here you can see uh, there are all four of those steps are happening here. If you want to take a screenshot of this on your on the call right now, I would say go ahead. And it obviously can be different for you. But this is a great example of, of hitting all four of those steps. So in week one, having a rapid refresh to uh, see where the knowledge gaps are, introducing people to games and leaderboards and prizes. Uh, th those are all great features in NAP because uh, it gets people used to the app. It gets them excited about 
the micro learning that comes in week two and facilitated discussions see where people are uh another thing that happens in facilitated discussions is knowledge transfer between junior and more senior employees so senior employees that have been here for years in your organization might have some tips and tricks that your more junior employees would benefit from and you can uh, facilitate that in one place in edapp and have those discussion boards which is so so useful and when they work they work really really well i have to say um then you can start your micro learning in, in week two through through five and in between have practical assessments you can see if there are a real behavioral change uh changes happening at the bottom there you can see ai powered spaced repetition this can be an ongoing thing that you set and kind of for, and from an admin point can forget about you turn it on in the beginning of week one through the uh, until you tell it to stop uh it will give a a quiz of to all of your employees at a frequency that's that's uh helps with retention uh so if they got something wrong in the micro learning that question that they got wrong might pop up that weekend uh, and and it can reinforce and, and help with with education in that way. So uh, there's so much to do here. I'm going to pass it back to Bobby. And uh, let us know if you have any questions and good luck on your blended learning journey. And we're not done yet. So yeah, we're not done yet. Thank you so much for that for that, yeah. Sam. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll also be able to make sure that we can send uh, send this slide deck to you after the call as well. Um, so you guys could take a look at this um, along with along with the recording. Um, I just wanted to check if there are any questions. Um, coach assignments, I'm actually going to get into that in, in, in a minute here. So I'll, I'll say I'll answer that one live. Um, all right, awesome. Let's move on to the next slide here. So I think just piggybacking off of what Sam said, one of the great things about putting all these features together is it, is it, that it can really be used in pretty much pretty much any industry. Um, and I saw in the chat that someone asked if it was applicable for healthcare. I really think you you can you can pick and choose which features you want to use, and you can use them in a lot of different ways, which we'll talk about today. Um, I just have an example up here of a blended manager program. You know, maybe you have a new manager that's that's coming on. Uh, maybe they've been at the company before. Maybe they're brand new. So some of the training modalities here that you see, these are some of the features here that, you know, you can enable, um, you know, practical assessment to make sure that they have maybe a, they have like a like a set of, of a process down. In this example, um, it's hospitality. So maybe it's like an opening and closing checklist or something like that. Um, instructor led sessions ties in the virtual classroom piece. And the face-to-face -face coaching ties into group training. So on the next few slides, I'm just going to quickly break down some of the features. Sam explained some of these already, but I just wanted to put in a couple other insights here for you. Um, and Sam, if, if I'm missing anything, make sure to, to chime in. Um, well, so yeah, I'm just I'm going to I'm just going to just rapid fire go through some of some of these features. And if you're not using all of these, I would really recommend for you after the call just to you know, hop in the admin portal, maybe create a test course and just play around with some of these to get familiarized with it. Because as Sam said, we're not just, you know, a place that can deliver e-learning and then you sign off and that's it. This is a really active experience that we have in that app here now. So you're definitely going to want to take, take as much advantage of this as you can. All right. So first up here, we have virtual classrooms. So I call this like, like the, the light uh, Zoom or Teams integration. Pretty much what you could do is you could schedule a meeting with a date and a time. And then in the learners app, like you're seeing here, there will actually be a pop up when they log in that they have a session coming up. They could add it to their calendar and you can also put in a little description here as well. Um, what's really nice is that anyone that that taps on this will be recorded. They'll be recorded as a completion in our analytics suite. Um, you can also post the recording in the uh, from the admin side as well. So if there are people that missed it, for example, and you know you don't want to just email out a bunch of recording links to a bunch of people. You could just post NetApp and tell them to go there to take a look at it. So 
And this could be something that maybe you do in the beginning. I'm going to show you a couple of examples when I'm, when I'm done going through some of these slides, but I've seen examples where they do some modules and then you have a classroom to talk about it. Um, and it, there's, there's a bunch of different ways that you can use this, which is nice. All right, moving on here, uh, we have group training. So we're, we're really excited about this one. This is one of our newer features that has come out. Um, and this feature allows for you to, you know, not even just in person, you can also do it if you're hosting a meeting over Zoom or something like that. If you have people together, either in person or virtually, what you can do is you can bring up this screen, you can have them scan this QR code to self-register themselves, or you could, as an admin, you can actually search for learners here to add them to the session. Then once you do that, you can full screen the course and then share your screen with the, with the you know, everyone that's on there. Um, you can go through all the lessons, and then when you're done, you can hit end session. There'll be an end session button up here. And that will push the completion through for all of those learners that have attended the session. Um, so it's, a, again, a really great way that, you know, may, maybe, maybe you guys are doing something in person that isn't created as a course in NetApp. Maybe really quickly you can convert, maybe it's a PowerPoint you're sharing, quickly convert that, you know, using our converter into app, and then you can share your screen and go through all of the key points with them at once. Um, so this is a really great feature. Um, again, everything will also be recorded in analytics and there would be a course completion, you know, once that gets pushed through. Um, so this is really one of the, one of the, uh, this and practical assessments we're really excited about because it really is bringing in, you know, that in-person training into EDAP for the first time. Um, this is now live in the platform um, and it's a setting that you can enable in your course settings. Um, so as long as the course is published and you have that enabled, you, you can run the lot, you can run these live sessions. All right, moving on. Uh, I know Sam briefly touched on rapid refresh here. Um, what's nice about this too, is you can use this in a couple of different ways. I have a pre and a post test example that I'm gonna show you later, but you can also use this in accordance with Brain Boost. Like say if, say if you're not, you don't have a, any courses to make in a month, you know, maybe what you do is you just create a rapid refresh quiz. It's all multiple choice. And you can push it out to your learners on something that they might have learned, you know, seven or eight months ago, just to help keep that at the top of mind. Um, which again, it, the more that you do that, the less the less they're going to forget things. So uh, we really recommend that that you would use this in, in some scenario. Um, you can also, you know, send questions out, you know, either daily or weekly. So if you had fifty questions that you and you wanted to send out ten questions a week for five weeks, you can do that using Rapid Refresh. And there is a leaderboard too that you can enable. So just like our micro lessons, you can, the learners can see where they stack up against anyone assigned the quiz. All right, moving on here. <clears throat> Again, like Sam said, you know, uh, you know, micro learning is, is, you know, pretty much the crux of our platform here. You know, using the offering tool, you can create these lessons and you have access to a wide variety of templates here, um, which again, just, you know, is our, is our main driver for learning. Um, but just wanted to include that here as well. All right, um, next up we have games, leaderboards, achievements, and rising. So if you're not using these as part of your training plan, I would recommend, you know, just doing a test and, you know, see how it sticks with your learners. Um, leaderboards, I would recommend this to, if you wanted to increase some friendly competition amongst your learners, you can enable course leaderboards, you could create an account-wide leaderboard as well. If you wanted to, you know, say if you wanted to pit people within a, a certain user group against each other or a user group collection, you can do that as well. Um, achievements, I mean, this is a really great feature that we have and you can create your own. Um, I know not a lot, not many of my clients currently do it. So I'm trying to encourage them to do it, but you know, we do have some stock achievements that pop up as a, you know, if you're a learner, it will look something like this uh, with, with the animal in this picture. And this is an example that you can customize what they look like. So you could customize the verbiage on this. You can customize the ingredients in the recipe, as we call it. Um, so I would definitely try to, you know, take advantage of this. You can set specific course, course completions in the recipe. You can set score requirements, um, earning stars, or even opening an app as well. So if it's something that you're not leveraging at this time, I would recommend going in there, maybe just creating an achievement or two. Um, because now when they log into the learners app, they can see all the achievements they've earned and even those that they haven't earned yet. And then real rewards is, is our prizing system. So that's, that ties into stars that are earned in the platform. 
And pretty much every, every time a learner gets a question correct, uh, one of our quiz questions or interactive slides, as we call it, they can earn stars. They can also earn stars by logging into edapp that you can also set in your app settings. Um, <clears throat> and then they can use those stars to play games to win prizes that you can set up in the admin portal. All right, I'm going to move on here. Um, yeah, so so here is our discussion feature that I know Sam had touched on before. Um, this can be used in a lot of different ways here. So you could use this as, you know, in, in this case, you know, we're talking about that manager use case that I mentioned before, you know, different different ideas to, you know, be a better manager, for instance. You can even use this, you know, in, in a lighter fashion where maybe you just want people to, you know, post life updates, or maybe you just want for them to use it as kind of like an open form of communication. You can also do that because what's created, and you can see here, is that you can post photos and videos to these discussion threads as well. Um, again, and again, it's just, it just, it, it looks great. Um, it's really easy as a learner for them to go in and post things. And if you have the app downloaded, you can actually watch the discussion thread. So you could also get push notifications if you have the app downloaded um, when there's a new uh, uh, submission here on a discussion thread. Um, I just want to pause for a second. Um, we have anything in the chat or Q&A that uh, I, I can uh, answer, Sam? Uh, yeah, there's some questions here about games and having to design them from scratch. Uh, I just want to add, I can answer that. Sure. All of our games are in the micro lessons are template based. All the slides are. So you never have to... Uh, go from scratch there and we have a ton of them we have true or false games where you swipe left or right for true or false we have matching where you can flip cards and try to find the matching with like words and definitions or uh, pictures and, and, and phrases so i would just take a look at our authoring tool click on games on the left side of the template library and you'll see a ton of great stuff there Oh, Bobby, you're on mute. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, no I, I, I think we're, we might be okay to move on for now. If anything else comes up, Sam, just let me know. Okay. Um, all right. So next up we have Brain Boost. Um, again, Sam touched on this before. I really like to tell my clients is a best practice. Whenever you publish a course, make sure Brain Boost is enabled because the slides would go towards the separate tile in their app. It will take the, the same templates that you have in your course, repurpose them, and then based off of the SM2 algorithm, they will, you know, push out questions based off of the courses that they complete as a learner. Um, it's something that if you're not using now, if you're an NAP customer, I would highly recommend it. And because all it really is on your side is just a set and forget it kind of thing. You just enable the slides to be boosted. You can actually track now in our analytics, um, retention and engagement over time in the Brain Boost report. And again, it's just a really great way to help with the forgetting curve that I know that if you've been on some previous webinars with Sam and myself, we've talked about already. Um, but it definitely it definitely helps with that. And again, part of one of the, you know, crux, crux uh, levels of the Kirkpatrick model is about retention. So this will definitely help with the retention um, of those topics that, that you're taking the time out to teach your learners. All right, next up, we have practical assessments. Um, so this, again, this is one of the newer features that we have here, and this is pretty much just a checklist that you can create, um, and it, it looks, you know, pretty similar to this. There are some other fields that you can have in here, so you can actually upload photos and videos, and we have a signature panel as well. What, what I really like to tell my clients is, is that if there's, you know, something that they need to prove in person, whether that's operating a machine or steps in the customer service process, you know, it could, it could be a, a, a ton of different things. Um, you could create a checklist in, in an app now um, and have an, an admin or a facilitator, or maybe it's maybe for you, it's a manager or a supervisor. Um, you can have them go through this checklist for a learner, mark off that they're compliant in all these, and then decide if they, you know, have, need, have passed this or if they need to try again. And you can also track all the attempts um, under the practical assessments tab. And um, once someone completes one of these practical assessments, it will also flow through to 
the course completion by user report and performance dashboard. The reports that I know, you know, you all are probably using every day or week. Um, what's really nice is that, you know, if, if you have managers, you know, on a warehouse floor, for example, they're not behind a computer, um, a learner can pull up a QR code to the practical assessment on their device. And that manager or supervisor in, in that app, it's either an admin or a facilitator. Those are the roles that can, you know, conduct these assessments can scan that and it will bring them right to the practical assessment for inside of that course and for that learner. And then all they have to do is click start assessment or tap start assessment if they're using a mobile device or a tablet, and then they can just start filling out the form here. Um, again, this is one of the newer features that we have. So I know some of you might not have had the chance to really take advantage of this at this time, but you know, if there's, again, if, they, if there's something that, you know, you want your learners to prove to you in person, this, this could be it. And Sam, do you have, do you have anything to add to that? I know that you touched on it a little bit before. Uh, just that this is really what makes, well, this is one of the awesome parts about our, our new suite of features. And this is so necessary to see if, if training is working because ultimately behavioral change is, uh, the goal. So yeah, awesome. take advantage of it. You can, you, you can customize it to your needs, which is also what's so great about it. And yeah, have fun with it. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, we actually have something in the chat about um, practical assessments being able to, to be translated and, and they can be translated. Um, we, can, we can link a, a support article in the chat on that. Um, awesome. All right, moving on here. Uh, we have coached assignments. I know this was a question before. So an assignment setup wise looks pretty similar to a discussion, but in this instance, pretty much a admin or a facilitator, those same roles I spoke about before, would have to go in and review a submission. And this, this could be something that maybe you, maybe is tied to a, to a course. You know, in, in this case, again, we're going back to that manager use case here. Um, but you know, this, this could be something that, you know, you want for them to submit. Maybe you want them to write out a longer form response. They still can submit photos and videos to this as well, but it just has to be graded and you can still, you can still as an admin or facilitator decide if they pass or need to try again. And they would be able to get that feedback from you as well, because you can leave a comment if you want to leave some feedback if they need to try again. Um, you know, and this, again, this could also be used in many different use cases. I know a lot of, you know, educational institutions are used to using this kind of format, but, you know, it could also be used, you know, for, for many different types of industries here. Um, cool. Oops, let me go back one here. So we have social learning and surveys. Um, these are some things inside the authoring tool that you can enable and surveys is a, is a certain slide section. We have a couple of survey types of slides here. But real quick, uh, social learning is that little chat bubble that you might see. It'll pop up in the top right-hand corner. You can enable it in the in the editing pane of the authoring tool. And it's available on, I think, most of our slides, right, Sam? I don't know if it's on, available on every single one, but it's available on most of our slides. Yes. And, um, okay, cool. And again, survey slides is really great for, you know, gauging some feedback from your learners. It could be used as like reflection slides here. Um, and again, there is a separate report for surveys in their analytics suite, um, and you can mix these up. So we have like a slider one, we have a free text one that would look something like this here. Um, we have a multiple choice one and a quadrant one as well. And what's nice is that in the reporting, you can download, if all of those, you get multiple of those survey slides in a lesson, you can just download them all at once and export them to CSV. Awesome. Getting towards the end here, um, just want to just wanted to touch on certificates. Um, you know, this this is a great way that not only for you to prove compliance, but it could be a great way to also incentivize learners that hey, you're going to get a, a complete a certificate of completion at the end of this course. Um, if you're if you're in a midsize or an enterprise customer or on a paid plan, you can actually customize this. Even if you're not, you can customize you know the name down here. Um, the logo and the badge up here, but you can also, you know, customize the, the verbiage if you're if you're um, a paid customer. Um, but I have a lot of clients that can make that have made different types of templates by course, and you know, you can really get creative when it comes to these here. 
Um, and what's nice is like in the admin portal, you can view who's earned these certificates by course in your app settings. You can also get there from the course settings as well for a particular course. Awesome. All right, so that pretty much covers off the breakdown of, of all of those blended learning features that you can enable in that app here. Um, I, before I get into you know, a, a live demonstration of how these can be put together inside of an NAP course, mm -hmm. I just wanted to discuss a couple of different ways how some of our current customers are using these features. Because again, what's nice is that this, these can be used across a wide variety of industries. So for practical assessments, um, the International Cricket Council is one of our bigger clients here. So they're using it to teach, you know, to teach people how to become a cricket coach. So they have a little checklist here and, you know, everything that they're marking off is going to help them become a, a, not only just, you know, a, a mediocre coach, it, it, they're going to, you know, be able to meet all of those things that they need to do on the field. For evolution wellness, um, how to become a personal trainer. You know, uh, in accordance with, with some lessons, you know, this is a good example of how you can have some micro learnings. And then maybe at the end of the course, you can, you can end it off with a practical assessment to prove that, to prove what they've learned. For discussions here, um, again, we, we have a couple of, couple of use cases that are completely different, which is really nice to see. So um, for our client Colgate, they actually use discussions for video introductions for teams around the world. So that when there's a new hire, they have them go into NAP record a video, a short video of themselves, and then post it. Um, again, really cool use case that I, I think. Also, Freedom Forever it, it has this thing that they call the grid that they're using discussions for. And they, they use it for, you know, posting, you know, meeting updates, things on the job, things that, they, things that people see that, you know, are anomalies sometimes that you might not see in your everyday work. They also use it too, from what Sam was talking about before, where the more seasoned employees share knowledge with the younger employees, which I think is one of the best use cases for this feature. And Bottega Veneta actually uses us for visual merchandising ideas. So they actually use us for, uh, use discussions for coming up with different ways that you can put outfits together and pair bags with different outfits as well. Um, and, and that's a really nice retail use case here for discussions. Um, just got a few more. Um, for virtual classrooms, Marley Spoon is using it for Spoon Academy right now, where they're actually having, you know, employees teach other employees about certain topics, um, which is great. Um, Auckland Unlimited over in Australia is using Rapid Refresh for security guard training refreshers. Um, they're actually using it um, after they complete courses to push some extra questions out to them based on the topics that they learned in, in the, the micro learnings. And then group training, Marley, is, Marley Spoon has also uh, started to use that as mandatory training for a warehouse staff on a warehouse floor. Um, and it's been working really well. Um, all right. I think, yeah, so that's pretty much all we have so far for the slides here. Um, I know I don't have too much time left. Um, so I'm just going to go right over into the live demo and we can do some questions after here. So I'm hopping into the admin portal here, and I just really quickly wanted to show a couple of examples of how you can structure some courses here. Um, so I, I'm, I actually created a customer service blended learning, blended learning example here, and I'm actually using modules here to group a bunch of uh, things together. You can see now that when you click create lesson, we do have a bunch of different types here that you can see scattered throughout here. And again, we've talked about a lot of these today. Scrolling on down, again, for, for, for example purposes, in this case, we have a virtual classroom as the first thing they would do as a learner. So they, they would, in this case, you know, log on to a Zoom or a Teams meeting, for example, um, maybe get some, some brief, maybe this, is the, the, maybe this is like their first day that, that they're on, and maybe they want to get like a brief overview of not only this course, but the company. This could be a great way to start them off. And then there's a couple of, of micro-learning courses. And you can see too, this is, was actually the customer service course from our library. It's one of our great customer service courses that we have. So even if you don't have a ton of time, you know, if you don't have time to create a bunch of stuff from scratch, you can utilize our content library. And scrolling on down here, I have a module here that combines discussions, assignments, and practical assessments all together. But you can actually edit these too. If I click here, I could edit the names of these. I actually have another example where I have it set up a little different. I have a food safety example here. And kind of touching back, touching on that blended learning journey slide that we had earlier, 
Um, I kind of have it divided up by weeks. So here we have weeks one to three or we, and weeks four to six. For weeks one to three, I have the virtual classrooms and I have the micro lessons. And then down here again, I have the discussions, assignments and practical assessments. Um, and then just one thing I wanted to mention too, if I go to settings here and I go to the engagement tab, this is where I can enable a leaderboard for a course and also boost slides that will go towards the brain boost um, feature. And if I click on view 13 boosted slides, it will bring me to the brain boost tab in our, in our courseware here. And this is where I can actually, if I wanted to, I could, yeah, I could maybe untick some slides, but I didn't want this slide to go towards brain boost. You have the option to do that. And then you, I can save my changes and see all of the courses that um, have been boosted here. Actually, if I take this, this uh, search off. Um, just one thing, one other thing I wanted to mention as well um, in the rapid refresh quizzes tab, I have a pre-test and a post-test example here. So in this case, before they would take that customer service course that I showed you a moment ago, if I click on this, this is an example of you know, a pre-test that they do before they go into the, into the course. And then if I go back, you can see here that I have the same exact quiz as a post-test here. So they would take this after the course and you can set a prerequisite on this as well. So you know, they wouldn't be able to take this until they complete that, that course there. Um, and here, just really quickly, I just wanted to show you that here is where you can see the settings. This is a 14 question quiz going out all at once, but again, you, you can break those up into daily or weekly sessions as well. Um, awesome. Sam, anything else that you think I should, I should, uh, I should show them here before, before we wrap up and go into some final questions? Or do you think, you think we got everything? I think you covered it. Um, awesome. Yeah, nothing from my side. Awesome. I'll leave this up in case you want to come back over here, but um, before we go into q and I just wanted to talk about some three takeaways here. So you can use blended learning for maximum engagement. You can leverage the Kirk Kirkpatrick model to measure effectiveness. And again, it's all about that learner journey. You can combine multiple, multiple features in that app. And again, what's great is that, you know, in your use case, you might not need to use all of these, but it's nice that all these are here available at your disposal. Now, um, before you get into question and answers, I'm just going to plug very quickly. We just came out with a diversity, equity, inclusion course in the library that's free that is uh, hosted by Karamo Brown from Queer Eye. Please, please import it. Take a look at it. Very, very proud of this course here. It's one of the best DEI courses kind of ever. So uh, enjoy. And it looks yeah. great. It looks great. Yeah. Okay, awesome. great. All right, so yeah, can we see, do we have any questions or Q and A's or anything in the chat right now? Let's see. We got, we got some, we got some good stuff on the Karamo course. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I think, I think we're, we're, we're okay here actually. Um, just had a couple other things I just wanted to mention before we hop off today. Um, I do have a slide on support here. So now, uh, you know, you, we have the live chat available 24-5. You can email support at edapp.com at any time or visit support.edapp.com for a load of nice support articles that you can that you can use to help guide you along your journey here at edapp. Um, and if you were interested in, if you're a free customer and you're interested in moving into a paid plan, I do have some uh, sales, some, some emails of some salespeople here at edapp that you can contact for some more information. Um, cool. Oh, we, we, got, we got some other questions coming in. Uh, do all the trainees need to have EdApp installed on a mobile device? Um, they, they actually don't. Um, you can, we do have a desktop version. Uh, it's web.edapp.com. You can also access it from a laptop as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that was, I think that was it. Um, awesome. Thank everyone so much for coming. Sam, thank you again for all of your amazing insights. I wouldn't be able to do this without you today. Um, so yeah, thank you for your time, guys. All right. Thank you, Bobby. And thank you, everybody, for coming.